Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, presents by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest breaking a trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And ding! On you, Husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Most people think of a nurse as a pretty girl in a starched white cap. But did you know there are growing opportunities for men, too, in nursing? Men nursing students receive the same preparation that women students do often in co-educational schools operated by a university, college, or hospital. The many fields open to men nurses upon graduation include hospital nursing, industry, research, and mental health. Young men between the ages of 18 and 35 should look into the rewards awaiting them as a professional nurse. Or, if you are under 50, consider practical nursing. For further information, write... Nursing Careers in care of your postmaster or inquire at your nearest school of nursing or hospital. This message is brought to you as a public service. Chet Granby was an elderly trapper. Together with his wife Ethel, he had made his home in the Northwest Territory for many years. But when gold was discovered in the Klondike, he was seized with just as violent an attack of gold fever as any of the stampeders who poured into the territory from the outside. Stay, Nabbit Ethel. I don't see why you won't let me mush up to the Klondike and get in on this here gold rush. You're going to stay here and go right on trapping. Man's a confounded fool to get married and never What's did What's that, Chet Granby? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Uh, what are you writing down on that paper? We're writing down a list of supplies that we need from the general store. Hey, you want me to go into town today and get them? Yeah, yeah. Might as well go out and start hitching up the team right now. Well, sure, sure, Ethel. I'll do that. And just remember, don't you go sneaking off to join the gold rush once you're out of my sight. Why, Ethel, dear, how can you even suggest such a thing? After hitching up the team, Chet left the cabin and drove to the village of Timberton a small logging community which was located several miles away. When he arrived in town, he halted his team in front of a frame building which bore a sign saying, Henry Tuttle's General Store and Express Office. Oh, 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 oh. Hank Tuttle, the proprietor, was standing behind the counter as Chet entered the store. Well, well, howdy, Chet. Howdy, Hank. Come into town for supplies, did you? Yep, that's right. I got a list of what I want right here. By the way, can you lend me a pencil and paper? Uh, sure, sure thing, Hank. Here you are. Thanks. I want to write out a little message while I'm here. Okay, while you're doing that, me and Herb will be getting your supplies together. Uh, hey, Herb, come and help me fill this order. Be right with you, Mr. Tuttle. A few minutes later, after the supplies had been stacked on the counter and Chet had paid the bill, he handed the folded message which he had written to Hank Tuttle. Hank? I'm taking a little trip up north a ways. But there's something I forgot to tell my wife before I left the cabin. So I wonder if you'd give her this message next time she drops into the Why, store. Sure, Chet. Be glad to. Well, want me help with those supplies? No, I reckon I can get them out to the sled all right if, if Herb will give me a hand. You bet, Mr. Granby. I can carry the rest of them. So long, Chet. So long, Hank. So long. Hank Tuttle's general store also served as a way station for the Yukon Express Company. On the morning after Chet Granby had stopped in to buy supplies, an express driver arrived from Selkirk. Hello there, Sam. Hi, Mr. Tuttle. Have a good trip down from Selkirk? Yeah, the trail was hard packed and I had good weather all the way. Uh, what do you got for me? <laughs> Plenty. 
See that express box there in the sled? Yeah. What's in it? 50,000 in gold. 50,000? Holy mackerel. Where's it bound for? From here to Whitehorse, then down to Skagway. It's being shipped to Vancouver. The driver from Whitehorse won't pull in here till tomorrow. That means I'll have all that gold in my hands overnight. I reckon nothing will happen to it. I sure hope not. Herb, help the driver carry that express box inside, will you? Sure thing, Mr. Tuttle. Herb and the express driver carried the box inside and set it down in the back room. There we are. You got the way bill on that gold, Sam? Yeah. Get it right here in my pouch. Yeah, sounds like a customer coming in the store. I'll go wait on him. All right, just let me have that way bill. Yeah, right here. Oh, good morning, uh, Mrs. Granby. Uh, some people may consider it a good morning. I don't. Oh, what's the matter? Did that no good reprobate of a husband of mine come in here yesterday? Well, he sure did. He stocked up on supplies for his trip. His trip? That's right. He said he was taking a little trip up north a ways. Uh, which reminds me, he left a note here for you. Let me see that note. Sure. It is. As Ethel read the note, her face became livid with fury. Just as I expected. That low, down, conniving old scoundrel. Is something wrong? I'll tell the world there's something wrong. Yesterday I sent Chet into town to get supplies. Instead of coming back home, what do you suppose that old fool has gone and done? I don't know. What? He's headed up north to the Klondike to get in on the big gold rush. Well, by ginger, he won't get away with it. Believe me, I'll catch up with that husband of mine if he takes all winter. And when I do, I'll teach him a lesson he won't forget. It was nearing noon when Herb Snyder delivered a load of supplies to the cook at the lumber camp. Instead of returning straight to town, he headed out along the forest trail to the spot where a crew of lumberjacks were at work. Oh, oh, you like it. Whoa. After halting his team, he walked over to a brawny, tough-looking lumberjack named Spike Buell was busy trimming branches off a fell tree. Hey, hey, Spike. Oh, howdy, Spider. You come to collect that poker debt I owe you, you're out of luck. I'm flat broke. Never mind about that. I didn't come here to collect any money. I came to tell you how we can get a hold of some. Plenty, in fact. What are you talking about? How would you like to get your hands on 50000 in gold? 50000 That's right. We'd split half and half. What's the deal? Are you game to pull off a stick-up? Well, I am for that kind of gold. All right, listen. This morning, a gold shipment came in from Selkirk. The driver from Whitehorse won't be picking it up till tomorrow morning, which means the express box will be sitting there in the store overnight. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not so sure I like the idea of pulling a job right here at Timberton, especially at the place where you work. If the two of us disappear, the next day, everybody will know we did it. Ah, we won't have to disappear. We can stick around for a few days till the excitement blows over. Then we'll make some excuse for quitting our job quietly leave town. Yeah, and what do we do with the express box and all that gold in the meantime? I've got all that figured out. It so happened that old trapper Chet Granby and his wife are going to be away from home for a while. So we can hide the box at their cabin till we're ready to clear out. Now, here's how we'll work. Tonight, you come around to the store. At that same moment, on the trail far to the north of Timberton, Sergeant Preston was halting his team near a campfire where a traveler was preparing his midday meal. Hunting! <laughs> Well, bust my buttons if it isn't Sergeant Preston. Hello, Chad. And King. <laughs> How are you, old red? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What in the world are you doing up this way? Well, Sergeant, I'll tell you. I'm heading up to the Klondike. The Klondike? That's right. Ever since they made that big strike on Bonanza, I've been itching to go up there and stake myself out a claim. Now I'm going to do it. What about your wife? Yeah. Well, fact is, Ethel don't know what I'm up to. <laughs> I had to sort of sneak away without informing her of my plans. Sneak away? Now, look, Chet, you can't go off and leave her like that. Oh, don't worry. I, I left a note for her at the general store in Timberton. I wouldn't be surprised what she's read it by now. Well, that's no way to do things, and you know it. It's not fair to Ethel to run off and leave her without any warning. But hang it all, Sergeant, I had to. If I hadn't run off, she wouldn't let me go at all. I'm not deserting her. I aim to come back eventually. If you intend to stake out a claim and work it, she'll be gone all winter. Well, shucks. Ethel knows how to tend a trap line. She'll make out all right. Chad, I'm not going to force you to turn around and go back home. I'm going to leave it to your own conscience. There's nothing wrong with your going off to hunt for gold. After all, you're not the first man that's gotten gold fever. But you've got to play fair with Ethel. Don't you honestly think it would be better to go back and talk things over face to face? Face to face? But gosh, all hemlocks are... Your you? mind's made up. She can't stop you. Maybe she'll decide to come along. But at least be a man and settle the matter honestly. Oh, dag nabbit, I suppose you're right. You know I am. Yeah. Are you going to Timberton? I'm on my way to Whitehorse, but I'll be passing through Timberton. All right. Let's dish yourselves up some of this grub, and then I'll head back there with you. 
That night, by the time Sergeant Preston and Chet halted to make camp, they had covered about half the distance to Timberton. The sergeant was just building a campfire when they heard a dog team approaching in the distance. Looks like we're going to have company, Sergeant. Yes. Say, I believe the person driving that sled's a woman. A woman? Now, what in blazes would a female be doing out on the trail? Of the... <laughs> Holy mackerel. It's not just a woman. It's my wife, Ethel. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, how about you and your whole family going to the baseball game? You'll have the time of your lives. Seeing those smashing home runs, watching exciting double plays and strikeouts, eating peanuts and Cracker Jack. Why not go this very week? Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Yep, admission is absolutely free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. And you can get your free ticket immediately. No mailing, no waiting. Free baseball tickets are right inside packages of Quaker popped wheat, Quaker popped rice, and Muffet shredded wheat. In Quaker Paco 10, you get two free tickets. Names of the teams and dates of the games are on every ticket. Remember, the more packages of these delicious Quaker cereals Mom gets, the more free baseball tickets you get. So tell Mom you want to eat lots of Quaker puffed wheat or puffed rice, Muffet shredded wheat or Quaker Paco 10. And just think of the fun you'll have at the ball game, seeing real star players in person and cheering for home runs. Now to continue. Sergeant Preston and Chet Granby were just making camp for the night when Chet's wife Ethel arrived on the scene. God, this is going to be even worse than I thought. Take it easy, Chet. She won't bite. Well, stand by me, Sergeant. Oh. oh, there you are, you miserable, scheming old reprobate. Now, Ethel, honey, don't take it Don't that tell way. me what to do, you old fool. Thought you could sneak away on me when my back was turned, did you? Well, I'll teach Wait you. Wait a minute, Ethel. Oh, it's no use sticking up for him, Sergeant. I don't like hearing my family troubles in front of other people, but if you know how this no-good husband's trying to trick me... I know all about that, Ethel. I still think you're doing Chet an injustice. An injustice? Huh. That's right. It's true Chet did sneak away without telling you and head for the Klondike, but he had a change of heart. What are you trying to tell me? Chet realized he'd made a mistake, so he decided to go back home and talk things over. He's already on his way back to Timberton. That's right. I was. I don't believe you, Chet Granby. You'll believe me, won't you? Well, yes, I reckon I can take your word, Sergeant. But Lance says it just don't sound plausible somehow. It's a fact, nevertheless. You bet it is. I met Chet at noon today up near Cedar Pass. We ate together. That's when he came to his decision. He decided to turn back, and we've been traveling together all afternoon. There. You hear that? Well, I swan. Maybe I have been doing you an injustice, Chet. Oh, you have. You certainly have. But don't go and look so smug. We still got to talk things over and settle this gold hunting business once and for all. Well, you're both tired. All that can wait until tomorrow when you get back home. In the meantime, Ethel, how about taking charge of the commissary and cooking us a real supper? That night, back in Timberton, Hank Tuttle and Herb Snyder were playing a game of checkers in the back room of the store. And they heard a dog team being hauled just outside. Uh, who in thunder can that be? I don't know. Late customer, maybe. Want me to answer? No, no, I'll go myself. Got to be kind of careful with all this gold on the premises. All right, all right out there. Take it easy. Who are you? What do you want? Bill Axley down at the cafe. A man got stamped. We need some iodine and bandages in a hurry. Okay, just a second while I open up. Yes, sir. Right side, Mr. Get your hands. Holy smoke, come ass, man. Shut up and start reaching. Don't try hollering for help, either of you. So this gun will go off. Just what are you after, mister? I'm after that express box that was delivered here today. Why, I don't know what you're talking about. Don't lie to me. I saw the driver hauling it into town. Uh, you probably got it stored away in the safe over there. Now, look here, mister. You can't come... Shut up and get that safe open. By thunder, I won't do it. You do it or you get a bullet. Now, go on. Get over there and start working the combination. As he faced the crook's leveled gun, Hank realized that he had no choice but to obey. After opening the safe, he and Herb hauled out the heavy express box and carried it out to the stranger's sleigh. Now, back inside. All the time, Hank was watching carefully for a chance to catch him off guard. As he closed...
closed the door, his attention wavered momentarily, and Hank made a lunge at him. I'll fix you, mister. Oh, are you? Help me, Herb. Look out, mister. Suddenly he'll shoot. Oh. Oh. There. Knocked him out, Spike. That was just as well. Now he can't make any more trouble. All right, go on, tie him up and gag him. And then I'll do the same to you and clear out of here. It wasn't until the express driver arrived from Whitehorse the next morning that the two men were discovered and released. Hank immediately rushed out to the telegraph office and sent a message to the police at Selkirk, asking that a Mountie be sent down to investigate the crime. When he returned to the store, there was a triumphant look on his face. Uh, by thunder, I reckon that hold-up man won't be on the loose very long. How come, Mr. Tuttle? The Mountie Post at Selkirk wired back that Sergeant Preston is on his way down here. Sergeant Preston? That's right. They said he should reach Timberton by tonight or tomorrow at the latest. <laughs> Just wait till the sergeant puts King on that crook's trail. You think King will be able to track him? Huh, I know he will. When I jumped that fellow last night, I ripped a piece of fur off the hood of his parka. That piece of fur will be enough to give King a scent. By golly, I'll bet you're right. It was payday at the logging camps, and the lumberjacks had swarmed into town to spend their money. Herb had previously arranged to meet Spike Buell at the Ace High Cafe during lunchtime. When he arrived at the cafe, he found Spike already seated at a table. Well, howdy, Snyder. How about a little poker after you? Sure, Spike. Suits me. Let's go over to that corner table and open here. That's a good idea. Well, we're all set. Get the gold out to Granby's cabin. Got back to camp by 2 o'clock in the morning. Foreman thinks I was playing cards at the cafe. Never mind all that, Spike. You're in real trouble. What do you mean I'm in trouble? I just found out that Sergeant Preston is coming to town. Well, what about it? I'll tell you what about it. When Hank Tuttle went for you last night, he ripped a piece of fur off the hood of your parka. Yeah, I know that. So what? That piece of fur will be enough to give Preston's dog your scent. What? He'll be able to follow your trail out to the cabin and back to the lumber camp. Or any place else you go. Don't be mackerel. What am I going to do? Only one thing you can do. Clear out and make a run for it while you still got a chance. Yeah, but if the dog can follow my scent, where can I go? Head for the wilderness. Keep on the move. Eventually, maybe you can follow off your trail. What about the express box? I sure can't lug that around with me. Not if I'm going to travel fast. I've already thought of that. We'll make a quick trip out to the cabin right now and bury the box somewhere nearby. Later on, when the search dies down, we can dig it up, make the split. All right. Let's get going. If I'm going to be playing tag with a Mountie out in the bush. I want a long head start. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, have you had the thrill lately of being right there in the ballpark when the leadoff man steps up to the plate? Have you been there to see the star players in person? See them wallop home runs? See the exciting double plays? Well, don't miss the fun another day. Come out to the ball game as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate free if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. Yes, you can get a free baseball ticket. No mailing, no waiting. It's right inside a package of Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice, or Muffet shredded wheat. Or buy Quaker Paco 10 and get two free baseball tickets. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry to get your free baseball ticket in the special package of Quaker popped wheat or rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. Now to continue. It was early in the afternoon when Sergeant Preston arrived in Timberton with Chet and Ethel Granby. He immediately heard about the robbery and went to the general store to question Hank Tuttle. How many people knew you had that gold here in the store, Hank? Why, well, I thought no one did except me and Herb. Of course, the hold-up man mentioned that he saw the express driver hauling the box into town, so maybe he just guessed what was in it. Oh, perhaps. Where is Herb, by the way? He's going out to the lumber cab. He said the camp cook saw him over at the cafe during lunchtime and asked him to bring out a few more supplies. Are you sure he was telling the truth? As far as I know he was. Hey, you don't think he was mixed up in the robbery, do you? It's not impossible. But when he comes back, don't let on that I have any suspicion. Oh, don't worry, Sergeant. I won't say a thing. Where's that piece of fur off the robber's pocket? Oh, just a second. I'll get it for you. All right. Yeah, here it is. Thanks. Here, King. <laughs> Fine, boy. Fine. <laughs> Can he get the scent? Yes, he has it. All right, boy, let's go. <laughs> After leaving the general store, Sergeant Preston followed the cook's trail eastward out of town. 
Chet and Ethel Granby had already set out for their cabin and were about a mile or so ahead of the sergeant. As a result, he didn't overtake them until they had almost arrived home. Meanwhile, the two crooks were just finishing the job of burying the express box. Now, tamp this earth down a bit more. You better fix some brush over the top of it so the place won't show. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You hear what I hear? Yeah. Husky's coming toward the cabin. Holy Mac, you suppose it's Sergeant Preston? It could be. Maybe it's the Granby's coming home. We've got to get out of here. Keep your shirt on. You're not going anywhere. I tell you, we've got to clear out. Look, it's too late for that. Our teams are up there in front of the cabin. We'll stay here. And if it is, Preston, we'll have to gun them down. A moment later, the sergeant and his two companions pulled up in front of the cabin. Okay. Hey, look, sergeant. Two dog teams and sleds. Yes, I see. Oh, land sake, sergeant. You suppose one of them belongs to that crook you're trailing? It's quite possible. Oh. You two stay back while I take a look inside. No, the place seems to be empty. Come on, Ethel. Whoever was came here certainly tracked up my floor. Look at King. He's gone all the way through to the back door. Yes, he must have gone out the back way. Huh. Back's leading away from the back door and none returning. Right, Thunder, you're right. Where do you suppose those people are going? From the way King's acting, they're probably hiding among the trees by the edge of the creek. If you get down there after them, they'll get the drop on you before you even find their hiding place. Maybe there's a better way, Chad. Huh? What do you mean? If I were to cross the creek and approach them along the They'd shoot bank. you while you were crossing over. Not if I crossed a few hundred yards upstream out of range of their guns. Huh? Well, I, I reckon not, but what then? While I'm walking along the opposite bank and keeping their attention focused on me, King can close in behind them and flush them out. I still don't savvy just how you're going to work it. Now watch and see. Here, King. <laughs> you stay here with Chet, boy. When I blow the whistle, go get them. Down there, boy. The crooks hiding in the underbrush watched the sergeant tensely. They saw him point toward the spot where they were hiding. And then he headed upstream, crossed the frozen surface of the creek, and walked steadily back toward them on the opposite bank. He was not yet within accurate shooting range when suddenly he pulled out his police whistle. Hey, what in blazes is he blowing that whistle for? Which me. Must be a signal of some kind. Yeah, but I don't savvy. The old guy's still standing up there at the back door of the cabin. Hey, where's the dog? I don't see him. We better keep our eyes on that mounty. It's probably a trick to throw us off guard. At the first blast of the whistle, King had darted forward, keeping himself well hidden in the heavy underbrush that covered the slope. The sergeant was just coming within easy gun range when the crooks heard a sudden ferocious snarl behind them. Look out, it's the dog! As Spike whirled around to fire at King, he revealed himself clearly. The sergeant's gun spoke first. Spike fell to the ground, unconscious from the shock of his wound. But Herb was still struggling desperately to defend himself from King as Sergeant Preston arrived on the scene. Help me, someone get this dog away from me! We've been pinned down, King, till I get the guns. All right, I have them, boy. Let him up. On your feet, Herb, and don't try any false moves. From the looks of that pick and shovel, I suppose you and your partner just buried the express box. Go ahead and find out for yourself. I'll do that. In the meantime, the two of you are under arrest in the name of the Crown. Later, after the crooks had been taken to the cabin and Spike's wound had been attended to, the sergeant returned to dig up the express box, accompanied by Chet and Ethel Granby. King had been left behind in the cabin to guard the prisoners, who were securely tied to prevent escape. A few minutes of digging soon brought the express box into view. The box is there all right, Sergeant. You can see the top of it. Yes. And unless I'm mistaken, the box is not all that's there. Hey, what are you looking at that handful of dirt so close for? We've struck pay dirt, Chet. What's that? Here, take a look. Holy mackerel, you're right. There's specks of gold in this stuff. Gold? Here, let me have a look at that. Land sakes alive, it is gold. You bet your life oh. is gold. Yippee! We're going to be rich, Ethel. Do you realize that? Rich. <laughs> <laughs> and to think you were going to go sneaking out of the Klondike when all the time there was gold right here at home under your nose. <laughs> By thunder, Sergeant. You and I'll stake out this claim and work it together. 50-50. <laughs> How about it? <laughs> I'm sorry, Chet, but you'll have to handle the claim by yourself. It's all yours. I'm too busy on the force. That reminds me, I'd better be getting the prisoners back to town. This case is closed. We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. There's Roaring Adventure on Mutual. Tales that will take your breath away and transport you into lands where danger is your constant companion. First, we take you far up into the barren Yukon territory of yesterday, where icy winds and howling wolves are enough to drive a man wild. 
and civilized ways are gone in an ever-present lust for gold. Now let's go to another lawless world, the west of early frontier days. Not so cold, but which makes up for the freezing temperatures with trigger-tense tempers, where the gun is a man's lease on life. This is a country which abounds with cattle rustlers, and where miles and miles go by before you see any signs of life. The West, beautiful but wild, a land which cries out for the hand of the law. You will never lack for adventure on Mutual, whether it freezes you with fear in the wild Northwest Territory or singes you with the acrid heat of the Western Plains. It's all on Mutual every week over most of these stations. And now, as Constable Ross and Sergeant Preston ride south along the Yukon Trail, Constable Ross says... That girl back at the cabin certainly seemed frightened about something. Yes. Spider Burke claims she's his daughter, but I can't help thinking I've seen her somewhere, but... Wait a minute. Oh, hold on. Oh, 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 boy, hold on. What's the matter, Sergeant? Now I know why her face was so familiar. She's not Spider Burke's daughter, and unless I'm mistaken, she's in danger. Come on, Alex, we're going back there and investigate. Come on, Blackie, get on. Who is the girl posing as Spider Burke's daughter? From the sergeant's tone, it sounds as though he and the constable will be heading into a dangerous situation when they ride back to rescue her. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company. Makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all Americans.